uh, hey everyone to our chaos value working group. We already spent 15 minutes talking, so now we're starting the recording. And so that is sustain OSS. The other one that comes to mind is open collective. Open collective is providing a platform for projects to collect donations and sell conference tickets and have a public budget and finance tool. So they you can, as a project, you can go to Open Collective and have a transparent organization, including transparent financial flows. How is it different from the one we are using through Linux Foundation? Open Collective was first. Okay. The we are using Open Collective for a chaos project. No, Open Collective as a concept or as the implementation is older than Community Bridge, and Community Bridge is a new implementation by the Linux Foundation. But the idea is thing is similar with okay. Open Collective. Um, they're, they're focused on really supporting um, organizations to dynamically form, whereas the Linux Foundation is focusing on providing a tool to manage the finances. So the, the, the strategic objective that they have is a little different, but when it comes to managing the finance of a project, there's a lot of overlap in how they work. So Community Bridge, for example, has a great integration with mentoring and other tools for open source projects. Whereas Open Collective, they also focus on, or they also target towards political groups and other open collectives. That's their name for an online community. So they, when we're talking about who is really interested in living wage, those are the two institutions that come to mind immediately. There are some others. Um, I know with the Bugmark project, when we looked at other platforms that do similar things, we came across several uh, like Gitcoin that is very much also talking in this space of how do we ensure that people get paid for their contributions. So those are ideas that come to mind just like that. So those are great ideas. And um, I think uh, I, I'm still not sure that that really like puts the finger on, you know, who this demographic is and what their concerns are. But to, but I'll definitely look at those. And uh, I just think it's interesting that it's a little bit tough to to figure out, you know, how actually can you get in touch with people who care about living wages for um, for open source developers. So Kevin, to, to your point, um, to the to the extent that we um, expand our metrics, which makes sense. Um, personally, uh, if we can figure out how to make this living wage, you know, metric maybe more relevant or expand on that, that that'd be my vote. Uh, as to where our, our attention ought to go, because I think these other metrics are going to be are going to be fairly um, straightforward to come by, um, and primarily they, primarily they they uh, you know they fall into sort of increasing business velocity. Uh, there's a recruiting metric that lots of people are talking about, and 
And, you know, to the business velocity question, um, you know, you can, you can find constituents who care about that primarily in business, you know, with business executives, uh, company leaders, um, the recruiting angle, you know, there's, there's going to be an HR, uh, constituency that really cares about increasing the velocity of their recruiting and reducing cost. Um, there's a branding angle, which is a little bit more nebulous, but I think primarily, you know, you, you can find constituencies on the business side around velocity and recruiting, uh, but on the living wage side, it's just harder. Yeah, I, I think it would be, I think it would be very interesting to, to dig into that metric further. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, I I think there, there may be a, a uh, per your, your steering committee idea, I think there may be a few people that we could reach out to that could help inform that specific metric. Uh, yeah. And the, the one I'm thinking about is uh, uh, the gentleman from uh, Sustain OS. He's a developer advocate who works for Sticker Mule. Mm -hmm. Georg, do you know who I'm talking about? Yep. Uh, so I've actually, I have interviewed him in the past, uh, and he has had, he has expressed interest in chaos. We might be able to maybe invite him to one of these meetings and just kind of chat with him, uh, to get his thoughts. And I, I can't think of what his name is right now. Justin Brockman. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely Justin. What did you say his last name was? Dorfman. Yeah, Dorfman. That's right. Oh. I'm looking at his LinkedIn right now, and it looks like he is now with Stackshare. So he might be receptive to this discussion. That, yeah, the stick share. Um, he's a co founder of Sustain OS. Yep. Yep. So it makes sense. Yeah, I think uh, it'd be good to reach him out. You know, one thing that's interesting to me, I'm not, I'm not really sure what, what questions should be asked around living wage. Um, let's, say, let's say you want to make a living wage with open source. Um, your primary mechanism to do that today, I think, is to get hired by a company that... Um, is going to pay you a salary to be a developer, a developer advocate, or, or a coder on open source projects. And, um, uh, I wonder if there are other avenues that people are exploring or thinking about, or if we should just exclu focus exclusively on that. Maybe that's okay. If that's the main mechanism for getting support, then uh, for for making a living wage to get hired by a company, then um, then maybe that's the thing to focus on: how to get hired, um, what salaries are being paid, things of that nature. So 
so I guess I guess maybe a question is: Are there are there yeah, other I know uh, for making a living wage in open source other than getting hired? So the hiring is hiring is one of those things that that people almost uh, uh, representatives from organizations when I've talked to them hiring people is one of those things that uh, they always mention as value that they get from open source so uh, like uh, Remy from Twitter, I think actually actually brought that up at one of the chaos cons. It's like uh, we're really interested in open source because we get developers from these open source projects. Yes. Uh, so the, the prime one of the primary values for them is is hiring. Yes. Uh, so that is also included for, in, in regards to that. I think there I think there are people that we could definitely. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was saying that is one of the question in my survey also. Like, do you use open source for hiring the managers or like hiring the developers from open source? Yeah, recruiting is a benefit that comes up over and over again that is, um, that serves the interest of essentially corporations or, or people who hire and um, so the living wage metric in my mind is is mostly focused on on the other side of the coin you know there's there's capital and there's labor right and um, it's kind of two different contexts to look at it's, it's just One a different context upper advocate and the other is HR right yeah yes right yes yeah, it's, it's a different context I so think we can we can explore that from both contexts, though. Yes, yes. I mean, if the you know if our if our value focus is exclusively on the side of capital, essentially, you know, then then you know all the incentives are going to be to to lower the cost of labor and make it harder and harder for you know people on the labor side of the equation. To, you know, to make a living wage, actually. I so think there's, there's got to be a balance. I think as a developing matrices for different aspects, our goal should be to focus on both the sides, the corporate and the individual, like labor market and the capital. We yes. should provide the tools to both the angles, not just focus on the one side. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think the the questions we have on our living wage markdown file, that's already a pretty good start. Um, so maybe we can think about formulating these out more and just work with the starting place that we already have. Mm -hmm. So earning potential, I think that is clearly on the labor side. Right. Or effort to get started. That is how long, what, how long does it really take me to learn the skills I need or job yeah. opportunities that is not the capital focus, but that's really the labor focus if we continue using that language. Mm -hmm. So how about we, dive into those next I think so I, I think what what is um, let's say before this discussion I was thinking oh there maybe there's going to be like different models for making a living and wage in open source um, maybe you know, sort of like the uber of, of open source where you can just be an independent person and make a living wage but but I think no I think that the only realistic intangible thing that we can focus on for now is helping people to get hired by 
by companies to support open source. Yeah. Okay. But it's a starting place. You know, we have to start with the low hanging fruits if we want to make quick progress. Yeah, and it's a good, it's a fine starting point, and it's uh, it's already working for tons of people. Yeah. Open source jobs. So how do you classify open source jobs as a, in terms of a labor or in terms of capital? Jobs are posted by the capital side and looked by the labor side. Well, there is a, there is a perspective from the, from the capital side, you know, around recruiting and that is, you know, getting higher quality candidates, lowering the cycle time to recruit new people, um, lowering the cost of finding candidates. Um, and so I think what we need to do is, is maybe just to put a little bit more thought into um, the metrics from the worker perspective. And what that job scene looks like. I mean, average salary would be a big one. Um, number of open jobs, amount of demand. So, here, let's let's focus on on one. Let's say job opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, a simple metric metric could be to search for the open source project in question on LinkedIn for yeah. jobs. Yeah. So for example, I just did this for Kubernetes and I come up with 24,000 results. Yeah. If I type in uh, Drupal, I get 4,000 results. Yeah. So I think that that's um, give me another one. Another Rails. One. Rails. Rails. R programming or Python. Like these are the two tools, especially in data analytics side, they look for. R. If I just type R. So Rails was 10,000. If I just type R, I get a lot of R and D and AR. And so R is not a really try, uh, try Node.js. Right. Node.js, uh, 20,000. Yeah. With a dot. And if I do without a dot, it's 80. So I think that is an easy metric we can yeah. write a metric detailed page about. Right. Yep, two thumbs up. That'd be killer. I uh, think three thumbs up. Well, if we count all four of us, it's eight, eight thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of thumbs. I'm using my toes as well, so. <laughs> okay, now we're 10. Anyone else adding their th toes? That's, that's a lot of, a lot of them. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, a related thing would be uh, average salary that these things are paying. Do we, I know here, I'm, let me start a Google Doc so we can start writing on this. Sorry, it takes a moment for me to um, navigate here. 
Do we have a template that we are following for our metrics? Well, there is for the final version. I mean, just the um, what sections we're using. I, I'll, I'll just say that the silence means no or we don't know right now. We don't know. Okay. I'm finding with Google Docs. I'll have a document here in a minute. Okay. Okay, right now it's a blank document. Uh, and I'm gonna create an issue. Could you post that URL in, in the chat? I did. Okay, so now we have a temple Um, so I don't know who posted the top question. I posted it. So below it, I posted the one that we already had in our markdown files. How is yours different or what idea do you have in yours that we can use to enhance the other one? My question was based on our current discussion that we typed a keyword and was looking how many jobs are available for a particular domain in open source. For example, uh, we, uh, you just said that Kubernetes has like 20,000 jobs available, something like this. Yeah, that's what I read in the one that we have as well. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of a thing. Okay. Description. 
Okay, so by in sample filter and visualizations, the two things that came to mind were salary ranges and level of seniority. Yeah. Now, I don't know if uh, LinkedIn has an API. LinkedIn has an API, I guess. LinkedIn API. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have an API. They have trade.io. LinkedIn has a good possible interpretation. Yes, they do have an API. Uh, one more thing, can we try the same thing on the Indeed or some other, or some other 
famous job hunting sites. Yeah. And Indeed has the API also. So, I'm going through your brainstorming list at the bottom. I think those are all good points. I'm trying to um, make sure we have them at the top reflected in the action metric. Uh, I would be very cautious with statements like the most because that I, I don't feel comfortable making definite statements like that. So a common way, I think we're safe to not. We are that. safe. Yeah. Um, 
I kind of like making an assertion because that invites people to challenge it, and that's a way to learn. It is. Uh, but I'm okay either way. No big deal. Maybe it's the academic in me that okay. wants only statements that we have data for. That's fine. Yeah, we we are being trained in this way. <laughs> okay. So how do we feel about this metric? I think it's in a pretty good shape. I totally love it. Look at us, we were talking about random things and then within 15 minutes we defined a new metric. Yeah. Go us. <laughs> I totally love it. So this would be an awesome thing to launch. I think that this is a goal we should keep in the meeting, pick one thing, brainstorm it and we can uh, pretty much define it. Yeah. Yeah, it's practical. Um, sources of data ought to be available. You can imagine how it would be used. Easy to explain. So I like it very much. Yeah. Does Grimoire or Augur have any schemas now to hold this type of data? So with Grimoire Lab, there is no schema that needs to be developed. Grimoire okay. Lab it's has great. a very flexible database. You just yeah. put in whatever data you want. Right. Um, so right. the question is, can we build a data ingestion part? Can we extend Percival to go query LinkedIn data? Yeah. Um, with Augur, I guess you do have to build out the schema, schema in the database for it. But Augur has moved to Postgres so they can it's still the yeah, available uh, option of JSON objects. Nice. What was that, um, Vinod? I missed that. I think Augur has moved to the Postgres, so they can now embed the JSON in the uh, database. What database is uh, Grimoire using? Elasticsearch. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a document database, sort of like a key value pair type of a type of a thing. Yeah, it's a NoSQL database. Mm -hmm. And the way that it works is you have Percival, which is the data collector. It goes out, collects the data, produces a JSON object. Right. And then you just load that JSON object into Elasticsearch. Right. And from there, Kibana can visualize the data. Right. Yeah. I guess it's called an index, elastic search type of an index. What right. we would usually call a table, they call an index. And then we have the Grimoire ELK, Grimoire Elk, which does the modifications on the data and enriches it. So if you wanted to 
I don't know, look at average time jobs are open or average, um, or, or I, I don't know, what, whatever the calculation is, you can do those in Grimoire Elk. So in Elasticsearch, do you define like a document type? I don't know. Okay. Well, this is, uh, this is great. I like it very much. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So should we, uh, should we wrap it up? Um, do we want to put this into a markdown file? Next. Yeah. Are we, do we feel like it's ready? Well, I think it is. Ready for the comments. Yeah, I think it is ready. And, um, <clears throat> and I think it's awesome, by the way. <clears throat> so, do we want to hmm, think about starting common plays? Um, we don't have that many people on the value call to give feedback. We can post an email to the mailing list, say, hey, we just defined a new metric today. What do you think? And we post the Google Doc so people can make edits and suggestions. Yes, that would be a great idea. Totally agree. That'd be awesome, Georg. Yeah. You know, did I just hear you say you wanted to do this? <laughs> yes, I can do it. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't sure what you said, so I just interpreted what I wanted you to say. <laughs> okay. So this will be my first email to the group, but uh, do I have to create a markdown? I've never done it, so guidance will be helpful. Um, you can just send two lines saying, hey, everyone in the chaos value metrics working group, we defined uh, living wage metrics. Uh, we would love your input. Uh, please comment on this Google Doc and then put the link to the Google Doc down there. Okay. And um, you can say, you can also comment on this issue and then you post the issue link okay. as well. And that's it. It's a really short email. Okay, I'll do that. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Oh, did I miss typos? Sorry. Yeah, my job is to sweep up typos. <laughs> good excellent well thank you for the productive meeting and good conversation yeah it was awesome i'll see you all next week thank you see you have, have a good weekend, weekend guys Bye.